did not see that. Michael, can you introduce yourself real quick and how you got involved with esports? Yeah, so I am Michael Sherman. I'm the VP of Development for Ivy Law. And uh, I started in March 2012 uh, working for Ivy Law uh, through the help of some friends uh, who I go to school with. And since then, I've done a lot of work in developing our stream content and our website. Awesome. Uh, so for anyone that isn't familiar with Ivy League of Legends, can you give a little introduction to uh, what the event is and, and kind of the overall goal of it? So Ivy Law is a um, competitive league dedicated towards college students. The idea is we want to allow college students to still be competitive while maintaining 15, 16 hours of classes a week uh, because it can be difficult. Yeah, that's absolutely true. School is a, something that is a priority for a lot of these students. Uh, but it is also a great experience for them to kind of uh, test their mettle for the esports side of things and work on uh, competitive sides. So what, what have you guys been trying to do as far as getting the, the overall communities of uh, League of Legends involved with their schools? Uh, we've been uh, getting a lot of people uh, connected to their various college groups. Uh, you can email us, you can check our website, learn about the players that go to your school. Uh, there's a lot of different resources that we can offer to help you get in contact with people. Okay, so you guys are really trying to set yourself up like a sport or more like a club side of things for it that just has an interest group uh, for League of Legends? Well, we feel that that's all part of the same thing. Collegiate Esports is focused around three pillars, uh, community, competitive, and events. And so Ivy Law really tries to help fill all three of those through One Star Clash, uh, our leagues, and also communities we help develop. We're approaching the, the end of the season two here, but how did you guys get involved with season one and what were kind of the changes that went or that occurred uh, for your development from season one to season two? So actually this is the third season we've run. The first oh, season me. was called, <laughs> well it's the second season, but the first season was called uh, uh, the beta season and it was very beta. Uh, season uh, zero. Yeah. Season zero, exactly. It was all uh, one league. Um, and, and everybody just competed geographically. And we found that there was a lot of drop-off because there are a lot of teams at very different levels. Uh, and so we didn't want to be as competitive as others. So between beta season and season one, we switched to a two-week format, the Open League and the Premier League. The Premier League was really focused toward competitive teams. Uh, anybody can sign up for Premier League. You only have one team per school. And that was the best of three every week where Open League was a best of one. Uh, then it still found there was a lot of buff in, in the, the Premier League. And it changed from, it, we changed from a open format to a, a true qualifier format for Season 2. Uh, so we took the top 16 from Season 1, and then we had a qualifier which had over 100 participating uh, teams uh, for the last 16 slots in the Premier League. And then in Open League, we ran a modified Swiss format. So the best teams were all playing the best teams. And uh, we didn't have to worry about, you know, having three weeks of buys because your team didn't show up. Yeah, I, I like the, the evolution of the format that you guys have. You're constantly learning from uh, what could be improved and, and bring a better spectator experience. So talking about the, the division of the, the higher skill leagues or the more competitive leagues, and then also that fan experience, what are you guys starting to see as far as uh, traditional sport rivalries coming over to League of Legends? So uh, really help. Oh. It's really enjoyable to watch those rivalries develop between schools. Uh, for instance, UT Dallas is a really big rivalry with UT Austin. UT Austin sort of has a rivalry with a &M, not so much anymore. Uh, ever since Scara um, left. Uh, He's a little too good. Both. He's beyond Premier. So uh, <laughs> not allowed in the college games. It, it definitely felt like you, know, you don't have an NFL player going back to play for his college team. <laughs> Um, Maybe in the future. We'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> um, but, but there are a lot of rivalries born based on traditional uh, rivalries within Ivy League. And it just how big we've grown that the universe, those universities are competing that we can allow for those rivalries. Okay, that's really great that you guys are setting up a platform like that. Uh, is there any way that someone that uh, doesn't really know too much about their own Ivy Law team or you, maybe they don't even have one at their school, do you guys have any resources that are available to kind of connect them with other people that are uh, have a similar interest as them that might want to be setting up uh, one of the, these clubs or teams uh, or just finding the one they currently have? So if you go to our website, you can actually find a list of all 
over 600 registered schools. And this is and, IVLOL.com? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so you can go through that list. You can find the different coordinators for various teams. Generally, one of the coordinators is also a club organizer at your school. Um, and so you can use those to, to sort of find your organization. If you have any issues, we can always help connect you. You can just drop us an email, uh, sherman at com, and, and you can always uh, get me through there. Or they can uh, tweet at you. What, what is your Twitter? I, sorry, I didn't introduce you with that before. It's uh, Ivy Law Bob here. Okay, it's right under your name over there. So <laughs> if anyone needs to see that, they can. Uh, moving into the, the finals that we're going to be having, the Final Four is going to be at Lone Star Clash, which is an event that's occurring in Austin, Texas next weekend. It's, uh, I believe, November 10th to 11th. I'm going to have to check on those specific dates, the Saturday and the Sunday. Uh, right. You guys just had the Final Eight, which got the, the Final Two players from each division to go up against each other and see who are the best four teams from each region around the U uh, yeah around the US uh, how exactly did that event go down last weekend and where can people find the, the VODs for some of those games it was a fantastic weekend or I guess day we, we had over 12 hours of content uh, every single match was casted and we, we just had a really great reception there was a really active community in the chat everybody was really having a good time and it was it was just such a great experience to deliver that content to people. Um, you can always find all the VODs at twitch.tv slash IVL. And um, it's, uh, all of our matches for the season are on there as well as this weekend. And you can also get to that from the IVLOL.com website where you guys also have a nice link to uh, the brackets if anyone wants to see the stories of how some of the teams got to where they are. Or uh, where your own school got kind of got knocked out uh, as they didn't quite make it the the full trek to the final four. Uh, so for these these matches, did you guys start to see any tailgating parties or anything like that, or is it just kind of a, a very uh, cool nerd centric organization going on? I I definitely know that the UT Austin game. I was sitting in there at their Facebook group, and there's constant chat uh, throughout the game. Uh, so they were all just active community the whole time. It was like within a second no of something there. happening. <laughs> so <laughs> within a second of ha something happening, you had a quick, "Oh no!" or "Yeah, we're doing it. We're the best." <laughs> nice collegiate cheering going on. That, that's yeah. uh, good that it gives the experience to people that might not be able to go out there and participate themselves. Uh, UT Austin is, is a great example to use. They're actually one of the teams in the Final Four. Uh, sorry, spoiler for anyone that hasn't seen those games. Uh, but they're going to be the host school for the the Final Four event. This is really interesting to me because. A lot of traditional sports, you have them move to a specific thing like the Rose Bowl or something else like that. We're now having the Lone Star Clash or the Lone Star Clash Bowl, I guess I can uh, <laughs> start talk referring to it as. Uh, that's going to be really exciting next week. And can, Are you willing to talk about that event right now and give a little brief overview for what Lone Star Clash 2 is going to be? Yeah. So this is Lone Star Clash 2. Lone Star Clash 1 took place in March of 2012. And it, it was just a StarCraft-focused event, but this year they uh, are expanding to League of Legends as well uh, as well as the collegiate side and it'll have four pro uh, League of Legends teams and the top four from Ivy Wall and uh, 16 StarCraft pros if, if that's your thing as well uh, it'll take place in Austin Texas on November 10th and 11th and it's going to just be a really awesome event it's it's really cool to see these community events become uh, a lot bigger uh, the the Rosens who run the uh, the twins who run the event uh, really have this idea that you don't need a, a million dollars to run a million dollar event and it's very evident it's extremely high quality they they just do a fantastic job at making this all to come together I, I personally was at IVL three uh, or sorry wow. A uh, <laughs> uh, whole bunch of acronyms getting mushed around in my head. I was at Lone Star Clash, the original one, last year, and I can speak from experience that it was a, a wonderful uh, time for anyone that was there as a player. The players were treated extremely well, so they were more willing to interact with the fans. It was a lot closer, more intimate setting, uh, so you could go up and talk to some of your favorite players. Back then it was just StarCraft, so adding League of Legends is going to multiply that like crazy. So if you're anywhere in the area, definitely look into checking it out, which will uh, give the link for how you can go get tickets or where you need to go uh, on the next weekend to get a hold of that. But the, the four teams that are going into it, can you walk us through uh, the lineups real quick? Uh, so we've only announced three of the pro teams, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be announcing the fourth one very soon. Uh, but we have Xeal GEU, Curse Gaming, and Monomaniac, who actually, 
they just you know announced a, a new spot they're, they're changing sponsors um changing so sponsors we, and uh changing lineups a little bit it's gonna be exciting yeah. to, to pay attention to it'll be it'll be cool to see their their first event under a new name and, and new lineup at lone star and your involvement with this is as the the league of legends event coordinator Mm-hmm. So I do a lot of uh, work with the. I did a lot of work with the format, the schedule, uh, helping arrange with the teams. Um, of course, I I did a lot of work with the Ivy Wall teams to get them all ready. Um, so I'm just sort of a, I guess, consultant at this point, <laughs> um, and helping make sure that the the event is how we want it to be. Okay, great. How's everything going so far? It's fantastic. It's okay. it's going to be a really awesome event. I'm really excited. And the the four college teams are uh, for this event. What are they going to, or how are they looking right now? And can you give any predictions for uh, who you think is going to be the the final one instead of the final four? Um, I I hate to make the same call uh, as the last two seasons, but I think it's going to be UC Irvine taking it again. They've never lost an Ivy Wall tournament. Well, was They're there the, was there another the UC team there at the uh, the last events? What was that? Because there are going to be two UC teams uh, going to the Final Four, so, so is that going so to toss a little wrench into the mix? Yeah, there is going to be UC as uh, San Diego for the first time. Uh, this is their first season in Ivy Law, and they've really sort of taken it by storm. They actually beat UC Irvine 2-0 in the regular season, but I, I think I think they'll take it this time. Hoping for an upset, but we'll, we'll have to see. You guys are going to have to uh, choose your favorites, and once again, you can head over to ivylol.com or uh, tespa.org, I believe, slash LSC2, so standing for Lone Star Clash 2. Uh, have a lot more information for that event, how you can sign up for tickets uh, and other things like that. Are there any promotional things that you want to kind of give a shout-out for uh, that event specifically? Yeah, so just uh, if you're going to be in the area and you want to go to the event, I recommend purchasing tickets now. They're going to be $5 off, $20 instead of 25 and you also get well raffle tickets, yeah. various things. Um if if you're going to be at the event, be sure to to check us check out the Ivy Law stuff. Pull me out of the way if you're interested in college uh, esports and and just you know say hi or or talk about what you want to do. All right, that, that's awesome, Sherman. Uh, thank you very much for coming on the show. Can you give us a, a couple last shout outs for yourself? Where people can find you, where they can ask you some questions, or just follow what your doings are, uh, and then anything else that you want to kind of talk about as events that are going to be coming up. Sure, you can follow me at Twitter uh, Ivy Law Ivy Law, Bob Vader. Uh, you can always email me at sherman at ivylaw.com. I'm very prompt in getting out responses. Um, if you have any questions, you can also get me on Skype at msherman505. Oh, that's dangerous, giving out your Skype on stream, but have fun with that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I, multiple Skypes, luckily. Yeah, a lot more information from the college level is coming out here. Thank you very much, Michael Sherman. Uh, this has been the VP of Development for Ivy League of Legends, which is your premier, le uh, premier collegiate tournament uh, for anyone to get involved with if they're in the college level. Uh, he also is going to be running the League of Legends operations at Lone Star Clash, which is next weekend once again. Uh, but thank you very much once again. Uh, this is Ivan Torch, and uh, we're about to move into a broadcast, a little bit of a show match that we have between two of the level two teams, or not level two, uh, second place teams for each division, Carnegie Mellon University and Cal Poly Slow Bros. Uh, that will be casted by myself and Jaws in about five minutes. Uh, the game should be all about setup, so we're just going to make sure we got everything set up on the technical side over here, and then we'll be right back after about a two-minute break. One. 